Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am over the moon excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dollar Tree fall decor crafts. Yes, we are starting our fall crafting. It is super hot right now where I'm at, but listen, it's never too early to get a jump start on creating fall and even holiday decor. On my last video, I shared with you guys some Christmas in July, so comment down below if you guys love that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafty. Yeah, so I'm just taking a roll of Dollar Tree 21 inch mesh, and I'm going to take a pipe cleaner and pipe cleaner it to the top of this witch hat wreath form. Again, one of my wonderful subscribers, April, sent this to me. Thank you, thank you so much. I've never found one of these before, so it was such a delight to find one and use one. And this actually is really, really simple. You just take the mesh and you wrap it around the entire wreath form. Now, you do want to pull it somewhat tight as you go and wrap it on top of itself. So you kind of wrap it and make sure that you're covering the entire wire part. You can also do these wreaths with the smaller little witch hat that they sell at Dollar Tree. You just remove the tinsel and you apply this same method. Now I'm going to wrap this entire thing all the way down to the base with the black mesh and it did take almost an entire roll of that large mesh. Once I have that finished, I am going to take a pipe cleaner and just tie it off and then twist it on here really good. And then I'm just going to cut that piece off. Now I'm going to take a fresh roll of the Dollar Tree Deco Mesh. And again, this is 21 inch mesh. And you guys um, can also find this at the craft store. You can't find this at Dollar Tree. I'm also taking some pipe cleaners and I'm just going to pipe cleaner, several pipe cleaners to the top part of the wreath form and also the bottom. And you can see I'm kind of staggering them um, so they're not directly on top of each other. The way that we're going to do this wreath is I believe it's called the poof method, which I've actually never tried the poof method before. At least I have it in a really long time. If I have, I do not remember. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to pull out about six inches on either side of a poof. So about 10 to 12 inches per poof. I hope that makes sense. Um, but you can see they're making these poofs. So you're going to pull out about 10 to 12 um, inches in length on the mesh and then push it together and poof it. And then you're going to take and pipe cleaner that on. And it's going to look like these aren't very poofy, but what you'll want to do once you're finished is pull those loops out and that's going to make it um, a lot poofier. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue to pull my mesh out, gather it, and then pipe cleaner it on. So I'm going to do that on the bottom and then I'm going to move to the top and then back to the bottom and back to the top. So you want to stagger it, uh, the poofs, you want one on the bottom, then you want the next one on the top, then you want the next one on the bottom, and then you want the next one on the top. So I hope that makes sense. And I did end up using just one roll of the 21 inch Dollar Tree mesh. So I was super excited to find this mesh. But again, if you guys can't find it, no big deal. Walmart selling mesh. Um, all the craft stores. You can even go on Hobby Lobby online. You could also order from Amazon online. So I trust me, you can find mesh, I promise. Um, but go ahead and take the pipe cleaners and continue to add your poofs until you get all the way down to the other end of the wreath form. And again, it is going to look kind of poofy and messy, but you can play with your poofs once you get done. You just do want to try to make sure that they're about the same size. And I could have measured these, but I decided just to eyeball them and I think it was working just fine and then once I got to the very end again just pipe cleaner at the end and trim that last piece off. Now for the next DIY, I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to pop a pipe cleaner down into the Easy Bow Maker and then I'm going to start out with this pretty Harlequin ribbon. Now I did find this ribbon actually on Amazon and it came in a big roll. I believe it was 25 a foot. So that was quite a good deal. The ribbon was not the best of quality, but it works for this type of project. Now I, the rest of the ribbon I'm going to use is Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm telling you guys they come out with the cutest Halloween 
Halloween ribbon. So definitely if you pop into your local Dollar Tree, grab some, or again, you guys can find ribbon online fairly easily. I am dovetailing my ends. Oh, and the other part, I'm so sorry, I forgot to mention, is you need to make this about seven inches on either side if you're e using your Easy Bow Maker. Now, if you don't have one of these, no big deal. I have a huge bow video, I'll link down for you guys below. You can use the Olivia Bow Method. You do just wanna make sure that you make super huge loops because this type of wreath will swallow a bow. So because I made my poofs about six inches long, um, I wanna make my ribbons about seven inches on either side of the bow. So I hope that makes a sense. Um, but it is a very, very large bow. I'm adding several different Dollar Tree ribbons and I just kept all of the ribbons the same size pretty much on this one. I used that cute little skull ribbon with the happy pumpkins and then some more Harlequin ribbon and um, just dovetailing my ends. And then I also used some of that orange and white Halloween ribbon. Now, once I have it all the way done, I'm just gonna pull it off and take a pipe cleaner and twist it together or you can just find a pipe cleaner that's down on your wreath and twist it on that way now I did do that but I felt like my bow was a little bit floppy so I suggest to pipe cleaner your bow together and then you can twist it into your wreath I'm going to make four of these bows and I know that seems obnoxious and very bowlicious but you guys know me I love to go super over the top so here is second bow and I'm pretty sure it's just as big um, as the first bow but you guys know me I love to do a super over-the-top um, wreath and this wreath because of all of the bows I feel like it came out re looking really high-end like something you would buy in a specialty boutique or an Etsy shop for definitely you know quite a bit more than what you used um, to make it with so you just need several rows of ribbon I suggest two rolls of ribbon for all of the bows and then once I had all of my bows put on there I decided to use these cute little witch legs and then one of those little Dollar Tree witch hats and then some of those little Dollar Tree ornaments and I just hot glued those in and then I had the remnant of this sign this is a three-piece sign from Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing a pipe cleaner to the back and then I usually just take a piece of scrap ribbon and put that over it and then use the pipe cleaner to add that on to my little witch hat wreath. And oh my goodness, you guys, how stinking cute did this turn out? The witch is in. I think that's so adorable. Now, of course, it's a good witch, you guys. I promise I do cute and fun Halloween decor. But check this out with all these bows. Oh my goodness. So make sure you fluff up your bows. I also did add a cute little bow to the top and some more of those ornaments. So comment and let me know what you guys think about this. I went really crazy and it got bam for sure big. You guys could always do this a little bit smaller or customize it and do a scarecrow wreath or whatever suits your fancy, but I thought this would be so fun and fabulous. at Dollar Tree DIY. I'm going to take four of these wooden Dollar Tree signs. They have a little pumpkin cutout and they're in the regular fall seasonal decor section. I'm going to take another Dollar Tree sign and this is a little bit smaller one and I'm just going to hot glue that to the back of these four signs. So what I want to do is make a large pumpkin sign. I'm also using these popsicle sticks to reinforce the little center boards there so they don't weeble wobble around and bam now we have a large wooden sign. You guys, I'm so crushing on Dollar Tree for putting these large wooden sign pieces out. The next thing I'm going to do is take this Dollar Tree felt pumpkin cutout and a couple of little pieces of scotch tape. And I scotch taped the felt pumpkin to um, the board part. That way it doesn't wiggle around as much. And then I'm also putting um, paper towels down around the whole project um, so I don't get wood stain or this is actually like an antique wax um, on my little table here. I also put on gloves because that wax is really messy. Now I'm taking a Dollar Tree sponge brush. This is the larger sponge brush and I'm adding the Waverly antique wax to the sponge brush and I'm just gently sponging it onto the wood. I was able to get larger spots um, with larger bits of the wax or the antique stain on there but I did have to really kind of push that wax into these smaller 
parts. So I put a little bit of wax into the lid and that way I could get it off on the tips of my sponge brush. That's just a little tip if you guys are doing this project. And so I'm really excited for this one because I think it's going to look really cool and rustic and I have the perfect space to put this in. This is a great um, idea too. If you guys just have a piece of wood that's like a scrap piece of wood, I didn't happen to have one. Now look how magical that is. I honestly, it doesn't take much. I just love these reveals. I love doing little mats like this, but look how amazing that pumpkin came out. Now, Dollar Tree also carries furniture polish markers in their kind of hardware section. So I'm taking one of those markers and I'm just going in and along the outlines of the actual pumpkin to kind of bring a little bit more dimension to it. If you wanted to, you could also bust out, you know, some brown paint or some different colored paint. The other thing I wanted to do was to cover up the little holes in the top that the sign had in it that Dollar Tree put in it originally to hang. And I'm just using a piece of the Dollar Tree burlap kind of jute um, rope or just like a burlap ribbon and I hot glue that to the top of it. And then here is how my little wooden pumpkin sign turned out. And I'll share with you guys a little bit later in this video how to do the um, bead rope garland that I added to the top, which I felt like was the perfect touch. Um, and I just used some beads from Amazon and then um, some of yarn from the Dollar Tree. Our Dollar Tree has been putting out yarn recently in the Crafter Square section, so I have been um, just kind of stocking up on that. But I think this looks so fun and fabulous on a total budget, especially if you want to add a little bit of rustic decor. You could also string some lights in and around the top of it. That would be a fun idea as well. For this next DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make some really cute little Dollar Tree wooden signs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little acorn and the fall leaf and I want to take the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just going to use that and rub that over the entire um, wooden surface and you guys could really use pretty much any stain or paint that you wanted to color these. I just wanted to give them kind of a subtle coating, kind of make them a little bit rustic and then of course we are going to add just a touch of glitter and bow to this. So I'm using this little shop cloth to kind of apply the wax to the surface. Um, you guys can also use the little Dollar Tree automotive sponge brushes. And usually I don't do the back of my surfaces. It's kind of to a fault a little bit that I don't, um, but I did decide to do the back of the surfaces on these just to get them nice and covered and in case I'm planning to set them in front of some mirrors. And so I thought that might be nice to have them be able to reflect back and not have like a weird wonky uh, backside, <laughs> which is usually like a lot of my projects kind of do, um, especially if I don't, feel like they're going to be scented in front of a mirror, but I just thought this would be kind of a nice idea. And so just continue to rub the wax on really well. And then if you want to, you can take some sandpaper and kind of give it a little bit of a sand off um, or, you know, continue to rub in a little bit more wax or just however dark you really want your project to be is kind of how much you want to apply and then how much you want to sand off. So originally I had just kind of wanted to do these really rustic and plain. I just don't really decorate like that. I have a lot more glitter and bows that I use. <laughs> But they're really cute like this, honestly. You could totally live them like this and just hang them or set them pretty much anywhere, especially if you like a lot of more subtle decor. I thought also it would be nice to go back in and give it just a little bit more dimension by adding in some more stain and this time I'm using a sponge brush. So this is just an idea for you guys. If you want to give it kind of that more real wood look, I guess is what you could say, like a real kind of rustic look. Now, of course I got a little crazy with mine. I, I ended up adding Mod Podge cause I was like, oh, they're just not sparkly enough. <laughs> If you guys have been around my channel for a while, you know I like to use a lot of glitter and bows. I'm a 90s girl. I just love it. I like sparkly things. If you don't care for sparkle, don't use it. It's, it's totally up to you. It's your choice. These are my crafts and you guys can use sparkle on yours as much as you want or as little as you want. So um, these are just ideas as well. So anyway, I'm giving my little project here a nice coating and then I'm using some of this iridescent green glitter from Dollar Tree, which is kind of a bit of an odd thing to use 
green on it, but my gold glitter was like really thick and chunky. And I just wanted it to feel kind of subtle. I notice at home that our leaves that are turning right now, I mean, we have a combination of green and browns and oranges that are all turning. So really in nature, I think it would have possibly some green in it um, was kind of my idea, but I'm also giving a little bit of sparkles to the acorn, which obviously the acorn probably wouldn't be green, but I wanted them to be matching. So the next thing I want to do is take these cute little bows. These are also from Dollar Tree and these are the pre-made bows. So they just work so nicely. They're so easy to use. I like to trim the tails off and then add them to the top of the project because I felt like the tails would kind of take over too much here. Um, and then there you guys have that. I thought they're so super adorable. And I just popped them into my little setting. I do like the reflection of the glitter. And then I just added in these pretty little pumpkins. Both of these ceramic pumpkins were from Dollar Tree. And I felt like they really matched the project really nicely. And then I just added in my cute little gumball. For this first Dolly Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make some super adorable little fall centerpieces using these Dollar Tree crates. Okay, so you can actually just take, these are wooden crates from the Dollar Tree, and you can take some stain. I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just using this little towel. It's just like an old shop rag, and I'm just applying the stain onto the sides of the crates, and you can sand it down, add more stain, less stain, just kind of make it however you want it to look. I think fall is really the perfect time to make really cute little rustic goodies now you can make one of these you can make two three I wanted to connect them and make them look more of like a centerpiece like something you might see kind of at Kirkland's or whatnot and we're gonna do it more of in a neutral style so I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna glue these end to end and really you don't need to add stain to the inside part of them if you want to save on some of your stain the next thing I want to do is take some of these styrofoam pieces and I'm gonna use um, hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue the little styrofoam pieces into your little wooden crates and then you're gonna have a base now for you to add some really cute little goodies so I gathered for this one some lamb's ear and then Dollar Tree is carrying these little um, pine cone sticks that have the cattails and whatnot so I used two of those I used some of the lamb ear and then some of their little mini velvet white pumpkins I wanted to do something that was kind of farmhouse kind of more neutral I've done a lot of like really pretty bold orange fall floral so I thought this might be really pretty just for a space that needs a little bit less busyness because I like to get a lot of busyness going on in my home decor and I just thought this would be kind of nice and subtle um, and so also now I'm going to take apart this um, Dollar Tree pick it had several on it so it was kind of nice and really Dollar Tree is putting out some really nice uh, florals lately I mean honestly you'd pay at least three to five dollars at you know a home decor store for a nicer pick like this so I'm just separating them and then just kind of pushing them in and you can kind of play with them and really it's kind of funny because when I watch these videos back I'm always um, crafting from behind the camera so you guys see something different probably that when I'm seeing from the other side so I did have to flip it around and kind of play with some of these but I'm adding in this cute little velvet pumpkins and again you guys can use pretty much any fall foliage or whatever that you love um, but then here's how it looks so far and then you're just going to want to take some of this moss and pop some moss in so Dollar Tree always pretty much always carries this moss they'll carry reindeer moss the excelsior grass all different kinds of mosses but I thought this was just perfect um, to go in with this little fall floral arrangement so uh, let me know what you guys think about it and I hope you guys are inspired to make a pretty little centerpiece so really it was only it was probably less than ten dollars and when you look at centerpieces to me and home to core stores I really think you guys can do these just as well on a total budget and I are going to bake a delicious a carrot cake. So we have the Betty Crocker carrot cake and then we have the cream trees frosting and then we have two sticks of butter, three eggs, and we have some cinnamon and some vanilla extract that we're going to use. So to begin baking your cake just put in the whole box of cake mix and then one cup of just water 
And now we're going to start cracking three eggs. So this is one of the favorite recipes of our family. It's so easy. We love the Betty Crocker um, cake mix. Of course, this isn't super healthy, but we love to use a butter. We used a stick of butter. And then, and then um, two more tablespoons or three more tablespoons. Yeah. And then we just melted these in the microwave. So we added in our butter, and now we're going to zhuzh it up just a little bit. We decided to add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and then also a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. It didn't call for that, but I picked these up at the Deli Tree to make a simmering pot, and I just thought that it would add some deliciousness to our cake. And now I'm going ahead and adding in our melted butter. We melted the butter in the microwave for about 35 seconds, and then we're just using our hand mixer although a lot of you guys said that we really need to get one of those really Mixing cute bowls. yeah pink mixers um to put on you know pink or aqua I think those are so adorable those to have so on your counter wouldn't that be super fun I would yeah. love that yeah so now we're just mixing up our cake mix it called to mix it for about two minutes but we did it for about three so it'd be mm -hmm. really fluffy yes and then now we're just going to scrape it all into the pan. And I did grease my pan. And usually I add some flour, but I was out of flour. So it did stick to the pan just a little bit. But hey, it tasted so delicious. I don't think anybody really noticed. So now that it's out of the oven, we're just going to go ahead and cut it and add some delicious icing. Icing. That is our favorite part. Oh my goodness. Yummy. Comment and let me know if you guys love carrot cake. If you're going to try this, Again, this is a family favorite. One of cherry mix, and then one of the Dollar Tree traditional Pillsbury yellow cakes, and then a stick of butter. My daughter helped me with this one, and it was so fun. Okay, so you're just going to get about a 9 by 9 pan, and you're going to go ahead and dump your cherry filling into the bottom. Now, we definitely could have used another can of cherry mix um, to add into this. It turned out fine, but I think if you wanted to make it last a little bit further. Okay, and also comment and let me know what is your take on this recipe? I've heard so many different takes. Okay, so now that we have our cherry mix filled to the bottom of our little um, dish, I, my daughter is going to add in the cake mix. So you're just going to use dry cake mix, and you're going to go ahead and just sprinkle that all over the top of your little cherry filling. Now, I know I was probably only supposed to use about half a bag of this, but my husband and my son were home, so I wanted to make it go a little bit further. Further. Um, so I did use about three quarters of that bag of cake mix and then once I got the cake mix on there and my daughter you can see she's um, spreading it around with a spoon this was a really easy fun one to make too if you guys want to do this with your kiddos or grandkids um, but anyway so I'm just gonna take and slice the butter up and um, once I realized I had so much cake mix on there, I thought, oh, I've got to go full on and go a little bit extra with my butter. You guys know me. I've got to go extra. And I love my butter. So we used a full stick of butter. Um, it was maybe a little much. I think we maybe should have just used about three quarters of a stick um, unless you're using the whole mix of cake. But let me tell you that this um, cherry dump cake was eaten the whole thing that night. I'm not sure if that was the correct grammar, but anyway, you're going to pop it into the oven at 350 degrees, and I baked mine for 35 minutes. As you guys can see, the center part was a little bit kind of bubbly. It could have maybe gone for another five minutes, but 350 degrees for 35 minutes, and voila, you have a cherry dump cake or a fabulous cherry cobbler is what I call it. Very fabulous and oh so delicious and oh so not very healthy. <laughs> this is a splash. I am using my ultra healthy ice cream though. I get the Briars um, low carb ice cream and it was very, very, very delicious. How yum is this? I'm so ready for some fall baking. Also just paired with the pumpkin making. This was like the perfect day of crafting you guys. So comment and let me know. Again, I would love to hear your take on the cherry dump cake. My son had the idea to do apples um, and then add like some cinnamon to it. And I think that would be absolutely delicious. And what are your measurements? Do you use a whole can or two cans or the whole box of cake mix? And how much butter? Tell me you guys, I have to know. <laughs> 
This was the first time ever I have tried this super easy cake. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna repurpose one of those Dollar Tree summer signs. It said, oh sweet summer. I chalk painted the other sign just with some chalk paint that I got at Walmart. And then I'm gonna add this happy fall, y'all. I made sure that I found a printable that had a black background since I did chalk paint the little sign with a black background. And I'll put a link to where you can find this printable but it turned out really perfect. I was at a Mod Podge, so I just used some Elmer's glue to glue this on, but Mod Podge would definitely work as well. Now I'm taking some Dollar Tree ribbon. I wanna add that to the top of the jar. And then you guys, once you get this little jar decorated, the sky is the limit. Now I'm gonna share with you guys for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we are gonna put it on our burlap wreath, and I'm gonna share with you guys this wreath tutorial right now. I'm taking some burlap and actually I got this burlap from burlapfabric.com. I do have a $5 off coupon, but I'm taking this little pipe cleaner and then one of those Dollar Tree 12 inch wreath bases and I'm just gonna wire the pipe cleaner on. Now this is the ruffle method. If you guys need more help, um, this is the ruffle method for a burlap wreath. So you're just gonna wire your burlap on and this is really easy. Trust me, if I can do it, you guys can do it. So you're just gonna pull your first loop of burlap through and then you're going to pull your second loop of burlap through and then your third loop of burlap through. So you can see on the wire wreath form, there's three layers there. So you just pull it through each layer and then you're going to take and you're going to kind of squish it down. So you just kind of push it down with your fingers and then you're going to take it in the back and you're just going to twist that three times. So while you're holding your little loop at the top, you're going to twist in the back and then you're going to bring it back up through the bottom and you're going to start your next um, row of little puffs here. So you're going to pull it through again and then you're going to pull it through again on the next rung. And my burlap was kind of a thick size. I'll link the dimensions down below for you guys. But you're going to pull, go ahead and pull it through. But just make sure it doesn't get twisted. My fingers were having a bit of a time with it. So you have to kind of unroll it as you go. That was probably the most trickiest part for me was that it kept getting twisted. So anyway, you're going to go ahead and squish it down again. And then hold on to it there at the top. And you're going to twist it three times in the back and that'll keep it from um, unfurling on you <laughs> or undoing and then you're going to push it through again the bottom and you just work your way up each time until you get to the top and you just continue to repeat this process over and over again until you get all the way around the wreath now a little tip is is the first one of these I did the loops were a little bit large and I did these loops a little bit smaller this time and I feel like I got better results and I didn't use as much burlap so so just continue to work that burlap magic and pull those little loops through three times, twist in the back, and then go back down and start the process back over again. Once I got to the end of my wreath, I just used a piece of pipe cleaner and I just pipe cleanered that little end piece on. And also I wanted to let you all know that Walmart and the craft stores also sell these large, big, long um, spools of burlap that you guys can make these wreaths with. I think Walmart's is about four or five dollars and I'm not sure about the craft stores, but I will leave that coupon code for the burlapfabric.com down below if you guys want to check any of the burlap stuff out. So once you have your burlap wreath all ready to roll, or you could add this into a floral wreath as well, I'm attaching the little happy fall y'all jar sign onto the burlap wreath just with some black pipe cleaners. And then I wanna go ahead and snip the ends off of that. Now we're gonna create an Olivia bow. So you're just gonna take some of that Dollar Tree wired ribbon and you're just gonna loop it over on itself. This is super easy, you guys can see. I'm just looping that ribbon over on itself. I wanna do that about three times on each side and then I'm gonna 
gonna find the center of my bow. I'm gonna cut two tiny little notches and make sure they're tiny notches. And then I'm gonna take that pipe cleaner and I'm gonna wrap the pipe cleaner around my bow, kind of pinch it in the center. But the little notches are gonna help you guys really fluff your bow out really well. So give your bow a really good fluffing. And so you can pull the little loops out and kind of twist them out. That's gonna give you that really boutique, gorgeous bow. And this was so easy. You just loop the ribbon over on itself, cut it in the center, and tie on the little pipe cleaner so you have something to tie it onto your wreath with. Now I'm gonna add an, another Olivia bow stacked on top of this one. This is using that Buffalo Check Plaid ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby. This step, of course, is you know extra. You guys just know I love to go super extra with my bows. I also had added in a little bit of the Dollar Tree orange ribbon and the Dollar Tree polka dot ribbon. So check out this bow, y'all. I mean, I am in love with big bows. I love big bows and I cannot lie. This it's true, I just do. So I'm gonna use up the rest of this ribbon. This was that Chevron wired ribbon from Dollar Tree. Again, I stacked another bow on top of it because we can't be outdone from the top bow to the bottom bow. I do usually do though my bottom bows a little bit smaller, but I'd like to kind of offset them in this fashion. So you're just gonna wire that onto the base of your wreath. I also added in some of that orange ribbon from Dollar Tree just to kind of give it that offsetted kind of cohesive look. So now that I have the bows added, I decided to just go ahead and take some of the Dollar Tree sunflowers off of their stems and just add a tiny bit of hot glue onto the bows. I kind of arranged them where I wanted them and now I'm just gluing them on. I'm gluing them onto the ribbon and also kind of to the burlap base. Um, I just really thought that looked super adorable. I thought it looked really cute actually too without the florals, but I love adding florals and going super over the top. And since it's happy fall, y'all, I thought that would just just really tight in um the ribbons and the little mason jar and it really pops against that burlap so I used some of the yellow um, Dollar Tree sunflowers and then some daisies and so I just thought it came out really really adorable again the sky is the limit on this one you guys could have so much fun decorate this to suit your home style colors I also created some really tiny cute little mini pumpkins so I popped a mini pumpkin in underneath the big bow and then one underneath that small bow and then I just felt like like it needed a little something on this sign to kind of pull it all together so I just whipped out my paintbrush and a little bit of white paint and I'm going in and just kind of adding some dimension to the sign now this part I should have done before I added the sign to the wreath um totally <laughs> so I was careful you know try not to get paint anywhere else but I thought it looked super adorable and it just gave it that little extra pop that it needed you know just to kind of make it look a little bit more rustic and have some dimension here is the finished product and you guys I was just so over the moon with this. I thought this turned out so fun, so adorable and perfect. A Dollar Tree DIY. I want to create an outdoor buffalo check plaid pillow. I had this idea from one of you guys. You commented and let me know that you were doing this and so I thought, hey, let's go for it. So what I want to do is take one of those buffalo check plaid tote bags from Dollar Tree and I just want to cut it out. I want to cut out the entire thing front and back to where it's just two panels for each side of the pillow. So I'm just going to line them up inside out because what I want to do is I want to hot glue them together and then be able to turn um, the pillow inside out. Now this is a plastic fabric, but this is an outdoor pillow, you guys. Um, and thank you for giving me this idea. You guys are the best. And so I'm just using a low temp hot glue gun and I'm hot gluing all around three edges of this tote bag. Again, this is plastic, but it's for outdoor and these are super cute and fun just to throw out there and hey it cost a buck with the stuffing you guys could use it on pillow um just but just be careful always use a low temp glue gun for any hot gluing to plastic <laughs> you don't want to have any massive meltdowns but the plastic was fine it didn't melt um onto anything so i also made sure i was hot gluing on the seams of the bag so now i'm just going to go ahead and flip it inside out this was the only part that i thought might be tricky that might not work um, but i was just really gentle with it as i inside it 
it out and then I was really careful to just go ahead and push out all the corners to where it still maintained kind of that pillow shape but I think it's coming out pretty cute for a little outdoor pillow for fall just grab some old stuffing from an old pillow that you might have on hand especially if you're a pillow hoarder like me trust me y'all I have so many extra pillows that I just anyway I'm repurposing them that's the best thing ever, repurpose and reuse. So I stuffed this pillow rather full because I want it to be nice and puffy and just ready to roll. And once I had enough stuffing in there, I just went ahead and pinched the ends together and I began to hot glue across the edge just to go ahead and get that pillow together. Now this is kind of the more tricky part when you're doing that last edge because it's easy to burn yourself, but just be careful. You can also get one of those little um, hot glue thimbles you guys have been telling me about at the craft store. Really Really need to pick one of those up um, but it will protect the ends of your fingers um, but, but I think this is coming out really really cute and oh so adorable it's kind of a really funny idea I know you guys to hot glue a tote bag together <laughs> that's plastic but for an outdoor pillow I'm telling you this is an amazing idea so thank you guys for all the ideas that you're sharing with me and so here it is in just a little indoor vignette now it was blazing hot outside so <laughs> I just decided to show it to you guys how it looked inside by my little hall tree and honestly I think it's super fun it's not a bad idea to put like on a hall tree or an entryway because sometimes I know my kiddos will come home with like wet clothes you know or umbrellas and so a plastic pillow now for this next DIY I actually want to share with you guys how I'm using the little scrap pieces of wood they're left over from um, my back patio project from last summer but I am just going to take and hot glue all three of them together. They were originally like little um, slats for the railing to keep Bitty Bear inside. Bitty Bear is my puppy dog. So I just um, made four of them. I was thinking I was going to spell out fall, but I ran out of time to find the lettering for it. So I may go back and add lettering to the front of these. So that's another idea. I'm painting them different colors because I thought that would just be a fun thing to let my eye dance over. So I chose yellow and orange, some greens, and then a quick little aqua. Um, the yellow is a little bit bright for fall, I kind of feel like, but you know, since I ran out of orange, I kind of have to make do. I do love this pretty muted green though. I think it's so soft and a nice cozy vibe. And you guys could also paint these cream. That would be another idea if you're doing shabby chic decor. And if you love pink pumpkins or purple pumpkins, go for it, you guys. Now I'm going to make this stem and I'm going to use the little Dollar Tree wooden cube blocks. I'm going to hot glue four of them together and then stain them with the Antique Waverly Wax stain. And I will tell you to um, leave a spot at the bottom without the wax because once you apply the wax, it makes it really hard for the hot glue to stick. That's what's been going on with mine anyway. So just leave that bottom side unstained that you're going to be hot gluing to the top of your pumpkin. I'm also taking this Dollar Tree sponge brush and I'm just going to sponge some of that wax onto the front of them. I think these turned out so adorable. I've always wanted to do some wooden pumpkins and I've never really taken the time to, so this is the perfect opportunity. Now I'm going to take and make this cute little bow. So I just took a piece of burlap ribbon and I'm tying the center of it. So you just make like a cute little bow tie. You take the ribbon, you just squinch it together and then add some jute twine to the center. Hot glue that to the little top part of your pumpkin and bam, you have such a festive little creation. I also had this cute little orange and um, burlap colored ribbon from Dollar Tree. I wish I would have stocked up on more because I'm already out of it. I've been doing a lot of fun projects with this, but it's so cute and I love the checkered aspect of it. Maybe I'll check back at Dollar Tree. I seriously doubt that they have any more, but maybe I might be able to also find some at Hobby Lobby. I don't know, but I'm adding that to the center part of my little pumpkins and I really had to tie really tiny bows and these are just bows like you would tie a shoelace with. Um, but here is how they turned out. I think they look so cute in this three-tiered tray. So easy to do on a total budget. Just pop out and grab some scrap wood or sometimes you can even go into your local um, hardware store and ask them about some scrap wood. And then if you don't, if you are doing the Jenga block pumpkin project that I did earlier in this video, you guys could also just gl hot glue several little jingle, Jenga blocks together and make some mini pumpkins that are just like this. So I try to think of ideas to make things versatile and totally budget friendly for you guys. I hope you're loving this one. And and are inspired to create some cute little rustic wooden pumpkins. 
For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna make a super adorable Dollar Tree stuffed witch hat. I'm just gonna take this pillow stuffing and I'm gonna stuff it into the Dollar Tree witch hat. Then I'm gonna take one of these Dollar Tree placemats. I wanna cut the center of the placemat out. You could really use pretty much anything, cardboard or even a paper plate. I'm then going to hot glue the placemat to the base of the witch hat. Then I wanna really doll up this witch hat and basically I'm just taking some ribbon, hot gluing the ribbon to the base of the witch hat and then kind of ruching it and hot gluing it as I go. What I want to do is use up a bunch of ribbon that um, I've either already used or that is just kind of short ends of ribbon. I'm also taking some of this beautiful McKenzie Child's ribbon. Oh my goodness, so worth the little bit extra that I paid. I actually found it during the barn sale, but you can actually get um, check ribbon on Amazon on fairly inexpensive. I'm also taking this beautiful dazzling jewel. I get all of my jewels from totallydazzle.com. They sell them in 10 packs and they're about about $1.50 each and they're so beautiful. And if you guys have bought jewels, you know they're fairly in, they're fairly expensive to find. I'm also taking this super cute little Dollar Tree pumpkin and then I'm adding in some scrap lace. You guys, I really want to glam this hat up and make it look like almost a centerpiece and actually I think that's what I'm going that's what I'm making here is a fabulous over the moon centerpiece something that you could really set anywhere and just make it feel absolutely wonderful festive and over the moon fabulous I decided to really go over the top on my witch hat and add more pumpkins on the other side as well as jewels and some sparkling Dollar Tree ribbon. Go for it. This is a great way to use up those holiday scraps you may have laying around thinking, gosh, why did I buy so many supplies? Well, you did it. You guys have a way to use those supplies. Trust me. Now I'm using it under my fabulous Halloween fall tree that I created in my studio. I added some little leaves underneath my fall Halloween tree and then I'm using these cute little Dollar Tree witch legs. I'm just going to kind of set them up. I may actually pop them into a basket to kind of keep them a little bit more stable but here's just a fun little DIY idea. Pop those witch legs in and then you can set your hat on top of them. Kind of like Glinda the Good Witch has landed to save the day. Kidding, all kidding aside but how fun is this? Oh my goodness, I just thought this would bring some joy to my little studio as I begin crafting for the holidays. And it's just a great way to repurpose and reuse what I already have. Very copper driven. Okay, so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree adhesive bling wrap and I'm going to cut it to fit the size of my flickering flameless candle. Now, Dollar Tree does carry a flameless candle that's battery operated. I have not seen them in my stores forever. So I just started ordering them on Amazon. They have a three piece set that's really actually really nice. I believe it's $18 for the three piece set. So of course it is quite a bit more than Dollar Tree, but it's a little bit, it's quite a bit higher quality. Um, it does take batteries. And so I'm just gonna take the adhesive bling wrap. I cut it to suit the size of my candle. And I did have to cut it in two pieces because it was in a sheet, but it just, goes right on your candle. So you don't have to glue it or anything. It just adheses right to your candle. And this is how it will look if you just use the bling wrap. Now, of course, you guys know I went a little bit extra and I decided I wanted the bling wrap to be offset with a rustic element to kind of give it just some dimension with um, the elements of this DIY. And so I'm taking the jute twine, I'm gonna wrap that around and then trim it off and then just hot glue it. And because the adhesive wrap has a little bit of sticky, it'll kind of stick a little bit to that as well. So I use the jute twine at the top and the bottom of this project. And then if you want to, you all could always add a bow to the front of this. You could call it good, um, but I did go a little bit extra and I used one of my totally dazzled jewels because they're so pretty and they actually have this rose gold that to me looks very copper. And because I'm doing this copper theme, I just thought 
thought it would be so fabulous. So I just added one of those as well. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this super adorable little owl. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. And if you love him as is, I think he is so cute as is. But I did want to just kind of soften him up and have him be a little bit more of like a shabby chic farmhouse owl. So I'm using some of that Waverly White chalk paint and I'm just going to go ahead and chalk paint him. Um, I did end up doing, I believe, three coats of chalk paint just to completely cover him all the way and I like to let it dry about an hour in between and then once I have the three coats on I did use the Waverly Antique Wax again and then I'm just using my little Dollar Tree sponge brush I like to dab it off because the chalk paint absorbs the wax really quickly and this is an antique color so it's pretty dark um, and so I just gently added a little bit of wax here and around. I wanted to give them a little bit of a vintage feel. And then once you have a little bit of wax, you can just take, I just used a paper towel. I think you're really though supposed to use like a soft cloth, um, but a paper towel is easy for me and I can just toss it when I'm in my studio. So sometimes that's a little bit easier for me. I'm using a gold paint pen and giving him a little bit of accent. And then there he is and he's just so cute and it just gives him a little bit of a different look, you know, kind of that more farmhouse shabby chic style. You guys know that I love, um, but again, he was really cute in the original form as well. So as always, I ask for you guys to comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video? I love to hear what you guys love because it just lets me know um, kind of what to more what to make more of and also don't forget to comment and subscribe so you can be entered into my Hobby Lobby giveaway that giveaway is going to be announced next week so I'm super excited to spoil you guys with the Hobby Lobby gift certificate so thank y'all for being here and I just love you guys so thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure it is a true blessing and honor to have you all here if you all are new welcome I am Olivia Flavies from Mantic Home and I love to share with y'all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. I truly believe that y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Now for everybody that comes back and loves on me, I thank you all so, so much. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. I'm praying for y'all and I just want to encourage you all to keep up the good work crafting and decorating. I know everybody is in a different spot in their crafting and decorating journey. So remember to give yourself some grace and give those that you love some grace as well. I always like to encourage you all to be kind online. Remember if you're scrolling through somebody's Facebook or Instagram or YouTube post, give them a heart, leave some nice comments. That joy and love that you leave will come back to you. I love y'all so, so much. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.